What's going on YouTube? Back with another jersey swap tutorial. In this case, we're not going to be using Liquify. We're going to be using more of just the elements that are already on the jersey, but manipulating them. So we're not pasting a whole another jersey on to make it simpler. But in this case, it can be very clean to do it this way, as well as a Liquify option. But just make sure you're careful either way and take your time. So the first thing that I did, uh, just to speed up the process a little bit before, this is the before picture and this is the after, after I content aware filled the jersey, okay? So to content aware fill the jersey, what you're gonna wanna do is just use your, your lasso tool, either the polygonal or the normal lasso tool, shortcut is L, shortcut L, and go around the, the sections that are comprised of just like a whole bunch of text, things like this. I'm just gonna make an example so if I wanted to get rid of just that part, I'd press Shift F5 is the shortcut. Make sure you're on the layer that the original is on. Shift F5 and content where fill. Um, Shift F5, then go to opacity 100, yes. And then you would do something like that. And then to get rid of the parts that are just like hanging around, you would use your clone stamp tool. Shortcut is S. Hold down Alt to select an area that you feel is going to like fit the fit the composition hold down alt or control or hold down alt or a command on the mac click and drag to fill in the spots right so in this case we'd have to do it for the entire uh the bay part of the jersey which that take takes a long time and i didn't want to waste a bunch of time doing that so i did not all right so once you do that though then just mask out everything separately on your jersey with the pen tool shortcut P and with the pen tool you can just click and drag click hold down drag and this click hold down drag that's that's how I use it click hold down drag and you can make selections of things that you need in this case it would be the collar right but I already have my collar so I'm just gonna go quickly around this make sure you guys are more precise then you would right click make a selection and add it to the new selection then if you want to do the opposite collar you will go around doing the same thing. Click and drag. Be more careful than I am, of course. I'm just doing this for um, purposes of showing you guys how I did it. Right click, make selection. Then you would press add to selection. Now, subtract from selection would be if you like did something really messed up. Whoops, right click, add to selection. Now, subtract selection would be something if you like messed up and you wanted to really subtract it. But the easy way to subtract things that are really precise, in my opinion, is going to the lasso tool, not the polygon lasso tool, the, the OG one, and just holding down Alt or Command on the Mac and then just erasing those little parts that you see um, are in here. So you have to hold down Alt or Command and then just click and erase. All right, so something like that. So that would be, all right, let me just delete these paths. Right click, delete path. So oh, that would be how you're going to get all your different parts selected out. So I'm just going to show you guys all the parts I have differently selected out. Just add paint bucket behind, just like that. Okay. So that's just to show you guys that. Okay. Now, what we're going to have to do next is change the color of the jersey. So I like to work on the color of the jersey first because it sets the sets everything up. So what you're going to want to do is go to your hue and saturation, put one on. And then I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to drop the saturation down all the way. But in this case, you see it looks weird because it's not clipped to it. So make sure you make a clipping mask. Right click, create the clipping mask onto just the jersey right here. So we just have the jersey clipped out by itself. All right. And now, once you have your jersey clipped out by itself, I also use channel mixer sometimes between hue and saturation. You can use monochrome and you see it kind of does the same exact thing. Or you can use hue and saturation. If you want to go for a brighter color, monochrome is kind of better for it because you can make it to a white. So it's either up to you, channel mixer or hue and saturation. In this case, I'm seeing that channel mixer looks a lot better. So I'm going to go with that instead of hue and saturation. So once you have that on there, that's all good. Just make sure you have like most of the points that you want to have. If you have like these little little areas that are just excess, that's that'll be okay because we can go along with the mixer brush later and just fix those little areas okay so what you're gonna want to do now is make sure you have your selection and you're like all right my selection is pretty good I'm happy with with what it looks like right now you know this part of it 
um, is not so good but we can we can definitely blend in these type of things after so go go to your go to your layers click on your channel mixer then click on your jersey then press shift f5 or you can just merge them without without uh without making a smart object my f5 is my shortcut for my smart object make sure you make a shortcut i suggest f5 because it's right on top of your keyboard but if you didn't you can right click and press uh convert to smart object okay so that's how you're gonna do that all right so before i move forward i decided i actually want to work on this part right here before we go on to any other detail and this part is really tough because it's just like a bunch of designs just like there 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 but the first thing that i'm gonna do is mask them out and then i'll be back all right, so I'm back, and I have this whole thing masked out after, you know, who knows how long. But we have it all masked out, and it's very important to take your time on jersey swaps. Do not rush things. And the thing that you're going to want to do when you have this selection right here is I'm going to go ahead and add a solid color fill on top of it. And you'll see why I do that after. So I'm just going to clip the solid color fill to it first. I'm going to set it to a very light, light white. And now that just looks like terrible right like that just looks like oh, okay you just pasted a color on there but no we're gonna go down to normal and we're gonna go down to linear light shout out to Ryan designs for letting me know this tip thank you bro appreciate it so put on linear light and then you're gonna put it on a very like light color right it can't be too dark it can't be too light linear lights kind of just gonna let you guess uh, not guess but give you a good estimate of where you want your color to be so I see that that's like a pretty good color and the next thing that you're gonna want to do is kind of fill in all the spots you may have missed from your mask because it's very hard to get a completely completely 100% accurate mask when you're dealing with pixels that are very very small on your composition so you're gonna go in with your brush on the layer mask and paint on white on the layer mask white reveals black hides white reveals black hides repeat that to yourself 10 times at night and you will remember this this uh, trick forever right so I'm just painting in these little areas and the great thing about this is okay we're gonna try to be as precise as possible but if we're not it's okay because once we're done with everything like all the main parts that we have to do we can do our detail work and use our mixer brush after to fill in the parts that we missed so don't be too like oh my god I didn't get all the parts in there if you are doing this just try to fill in all the parts that you can uh, as necessary and then at the end you can go in with the mixer brush and just blend some things together a quick hack but you don't want to use it too much okay so now we have like pretty much the whole jersey is white that we're gonna need everything would be grayed out but you see we have the collar still and we have all the parts that we're still gonna have to use after the fact and also I'm gonna turn back on just a black solid layer so I can just see what's going on underneath only and not be distracted by the crowd so now we have all of this right and now I'm feeling confident in it so I'm gonna make a group out of this I'm gonna say white base jersey group and if you don't know how to use a group you just select all the, the layers and then you press uh, control G to make a group so I usually make a group and then I duplicate the group just in case I want to go back and I'm not sure of it. So I duplicate the group and then I press control E to merge it. And now I have my white base jersey group, right? So I put this on red because I know I'm not going to use it. So now I have my white base jersey. And the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're doing the city jersey collection. So let's go to the Oakland jersey right here. But we're going to add a gradient map on the white jersey we just made. So let's add a gradient map or a solid color I'm gonna see which one works better okay so now we have a gradient map but right like before you can hold down alt or right click and make a clipping mask but I hold down alt or command on the Mac and make my clipping mask to the Jersey and then you go on your gradient map and we're gonna set the colors for that like bluish uh, dark bluish navy bluish so you got you got your your gradient map it's dark to light dark to light so your darkest colors are gonna be down here lightest colors are gonna be on the right so now I'm gonna go to the middle and select just uh, just the color that I see in here somewhere that I see in here that's kinda similar to it and then on the end I'm gonna also select a color that's a little bit brighter on this side right and that would be kind of where you want to start as a basis and then you can adjust from there right so you're gonna just try to adjust from there 
get a little bit darker maybe on this side just do different types of things to help out your jersey and you're just gonna have to experiment a lot on gradient maps like you, you sometimes you're gonna get that perfect gradient map right off the bat sometimes it's like uh, I can't find the right one but um, if you do have a white jersey or a really gray jersey I like to use just solid color more it's just like there's two options I like to use solid color though so if you add a solid color and then you pick the color that you want to have on there then you go and do what we just did and put it on linear light now I can literally just kinda drag wherever I really feel like I want to drag and I'm getting better a better like reference of what color I want right but sometimes it doesn't work because of the grays that you're using or if you can't really saturate what you're using so it's really important to know how to do both but in most cases try to go with the gradient map but you know if you can avoid it I, I do <laughs> and then the next thing that I add on top of it is a levels adjustment so I click the levels adjustment and then I'm just going around kinda I'm just always referencing what I see on my image I always usually use a reference image it always helps me out a ton uh, to use them so I'm just going around getting in the ballpark of where that color is and it's it's like right around there it's like right around there so I'm gonna leave it right there and then one other thing you can add is a curves on top of that I know we're like stacking a lot of things but we're just going through a lot of options and then you go to your RGB colors then go to your blue if you slide it to the left it's gonna give you more blues and if you slide it to the right it's gonna give you more of the greens and adding more of the greens I see the greens in there like it's just something you pick up on I see more of the greens in there so I'm seeing that that is almost like perfectly to what I want not exactly but very close to what I want all right so I make another group from this and I'm gonna say Jersey blue color base all right now we're on to the collars so or not the collars the sleeves so with the sleeves uh, we can do the same type of thing um, on the edge you guys see it's like yellow but like I said mixer brush tool is gonna clean everything up at the end but what we're gonna do is kind of the same exact step so let's go and add our hue and saturation drop that down to hue saturation or the channel mixer like before see which one is gonna work better for it and I can set it to monochrome and the red see this this way I don't see a lot of uh, a lot of things that are going for it on on hue and saturation once again okay so now we have these white again and I'm going to merge them and copy I'm not gonna say the same steps that we already just did so just make sure you uh, definitely pay attention to the last one then I'm gonna try and see the solid color again I'm gonna set it to red this time and put it on linear light it is too red so we have to drop that down so it's on linear light again and then I'm dropping that down to get that red there okay so there we go with the red and then we have to do the same thing for the collar well the collar is actually gonna change but I'll show you guys how it's going to change alright so I don't know about you guys but for the collar I like to make my life less stressful so I found a picture online of Steph Curry with these old sleeve jerseys that they had because I knew this collar looked familiar to me so I found that online and I just downloaded it and then I made a mask of the the sleeve collar so and I just copied it and I put it back onto my little thing right here so I put it in there so that's the, that's the collar that's over with the gradient map though and with the gradient map um, it kind of took me some time to figure out so I just went ahead and did it and now I'm going to show you guys what I did but here's the gradient map here it's from a very very bright red right so a very bright red I think it might be a little bit too bright maybe not from a very bright red to a darker red there and then we're getting over to the white okay so that's what I did for my collar and now with the collar I'm gonna just size it and I'm going to right click and warp it gonna press warp warp my collar onto there like this all right and once you get there you're not done with it yet so let's go into liquify and I'm gonna work on the the white base jersey okay so I'm gonna work on the white base jersey group copy but I'm gonna liquify it so I'm gonna go to filter 
and I'm going to go to liquify all right and now on liquify I'm gonna show my backdrop and I'm going to go to the white base jersey group and then I'm going to shape this exactly to what the jersey underneath is and you're gonna use the forward warp tool shortcut is W but it's the top one on there on the left and I'm gonna set my opacity and I'm going to warp it to until I see fit All right, so I warped it until I saw fit, right? But now, I I literally didn't even notice that the middle was yellow, but all you have to do on the gradient map is change this from that white to a yellow, okay? And what I would probably do is use a sample up here. So go onto the gradient map, click back on, and I'm gonna use a sample yellow from this picture. Okay, so there we go with our yellow, right? And then you can just adjust and play around with this stuff uh, on the gradient map. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit after but for right now I'm gonna leave it. Like I said, we're gonna clean everything up after this is just getting all the elements on. We're just getting all the elements on, right? So I don't even need this anymore so I'm gonna close out of it. And now I'm gonna go back onto this Oakland layer because I wanna get this Oakland text on there. So I'm gonna go click around and I'm even gonna actually reference this number so I know where, where it's gonna be at, right? So I'm gonna click on that, and now we have a mask of that, and I'm going to right click, and actually I'm not gonna convert to a smart object yet. I'm just gonna press Control C, and then I'm going to paste it onto here, and then I'm gonna name it Oakland Text. Okay, so now I have that named as Oakland Text, and now at this point I'm gonna make it into a smart object, just in case if I resize it, I can go back so I right click and press convert to smart object but you guys should make a shortcut like I said F5 is my shortcut for a smart object as I've stated before I believe make a short make a shortcut for your smart objects so now once you have it on there you're just gonna what I do is I just start resizing and mix not mixing up things but I just start resizing and I look at the reference that I have I always put a reference picture on there but just go ahead and resize that jersey and just what it what its uh, origin is kind of looking like. And then from there, once you resize it onto the uh, subject, but what I what I try to do is I take away the darknesses. So to do that, I go right click on the Oakland text. I right click, go to blending options, and then I try to take away the darknesses. So I'll go to uh, the top on this layer and I slide this the the blacks. I slide that right. So just slide that to the right, and that's going to get rid of all the darknesses. Now that doesn't work every time. In this case, I I guess I'm lucky that it did. But sometimes you're not going to be able to do that, and you're just going to have to actually just mask everything out. It takes a while, but if you want to make clean jersey swaps, these are the things you're going to have to go through. So just slide that to the right, and then feather it a little bit. So the, to feather, you're going to, uh, instead of these being together, you're going to press Alt or Command on the Mac, and just feather those out. Okay? So do that. And then once you're good, once you're satisfied with the selection, delete the number for now because he's obviously not number 30. So I'm going to delete that out of there with a layer mask. Okay. All right. So great. Now you got the text on there. And in this case, we don't even need to do too much to make it like look like it's really realistic because uh, it already looks pretty nice. But. I'm going to show you guys a quick thing to use that I've been using very recently that helps me on my 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 art and that is displacement map so uh, make sure you always have a copy of the image but this is how you make a displacement map you go on the original image that you have right there and then you're gonna put hue and saturation on clip it desaturate it all the way down right and then from there you're gonna also blur the image just a little bit so go to filter blur Gaussian blur we're only gonna blur it like one or maybe even less, but I'll set it at one for right now. So that's what you're gonna do, blur it a little bit. And then to bring out some of the colors, also add a curves adjustment layer. And with this curves adjustment layer, the more it looks like roller coasters, the more detail you're gonna bring out in the picture. So just make a little bit of a uh, difference between the lights and darknesses in there. 
And here we go with the picture right there. And then once you're done with that, you're going to go to File, Save As, and save this as just a normal PSD, but just put Kai Bow Displacement. I'll put two because I already saved one. But just, um, just save it as a displacement map right there. It's actually as a PSD. Click on Save. OK. Now we're good to go. And honestly, we don't even need this anymore. So we could just press Delete on that. So now we have a displacement map for this, this image. And what you're going to do with the displacement map, it's not going to do too much on here. I already know because we don't have to change much. But to use the displacement map, you go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Okay. And with this, you have a horizontal and vertical scale. Usually what works for me is through like 7 to 10. If it's a really small thing, it's like you got to go back and forth. But uh, once it's the displacement app's on there, it already reads it, and you can just change it from there. So I'm going to go 8 by 8 for right now and just press OK. And then I'm going to click on my displacement map that I have. And you guys see, I told you, you're not going to have to displace it a lot. But um, you can see it like f goes in forms to what you have. So we're going to do a better job on that. Probably go to like 2 by 2. We might not even actually need this displacement map on here. See, might not even need it. But that's how you do a displacement map. That, that, that one looks a lot better than before because... It's just giving a little bit more depth to everything. Like, see on the curves, you can see it's a little bit um, altered there. Like, I'm gonna make a different tutorial on how it, like, you can make it have a big impact. But right there is very fine. And then now we're going to do the side stripes of this jersey too. All right, so I know that I have the trim right here, but I'm looking at it again, and I'm like, uh, this doesn't really match this right here. And good for us that the NBA City jersey right here. It has a very nice and clean stripe that we can see very visually. And there's also text on there. So if we can get that into our subject, that's going to be very good for us. So I'm just going to, I masked it out and I'm just going to press Control C like the last time we did this. And I'm going to paste this element into there as well. Okay. So now I'm just going to type the title that says Trim 1 because we're going to have to do it on both sides. So I'm titling that as Trim 1. I'm going to make a copy. Um, and this is going to be trim two right there. So now with trim one, I just resized it a little bit. And once it's to about this thickness, right, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to warp it to making it looking, make it look kind of similar to what we had before or what's underneath there. Just using my warp tool to make these points in it you hold down alt or command and you can make those little tiny points in there they give it a little bit of uh give it a little bit of flair i don't know what to exactly say there but just give it a little bit of uh, impact right so now i have that trim on there and also on this one we can use the displacement map because we already made a displacement map so that means we can just use it once again so i'm going to go to distort Displace and I'm gonna go five by five first. I don't know how it's gonna look, but okay. Not too bad, but we're gonna we're gonna set it back to something lower again. Alright, and that just gives it a little bit of room. See how it just cuffs up a little bit. Like these little tiny details are what is gonna make the difference. And now with this trim underneath, I'm just not even gonna use it. Really, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have it so I can see this part. So with trim number two, we're just gonna bring it over here, resize it, and I'm gonna flip it onto this side now. And this way, I'm going to warp it again, but just to what it, what's on there, just to what I see is there. I'm gonna warp it down like this. Just take your time with this. These are important parts of your jersey swap. I'm warping it down. All right, and now I see what I like to see there, so I see that. And I'm going to I'm going to uh control click, so I'm going to press control, click on my jersey mask, the jersey trim mask that I had originally, click on that. And now I'm going to go on my trim tool and mask that. So now I have that fitting in there greatly and nicely okay without it on th off the side of the edge because the mass is a little bit over so I can just go under and set my my opacity down and just 
get rid of that part right there. All right. Nice. Now, one of the last things that we're going to have to do is the number. And then I'm also going to show you guys um, how to use your displacement maps on the shorts to do kind of a short design. But let's find the number first. And then I, we're just going to put the number on. Oh, yeah. And also, once you're done with the side of the jersey trim, don't just leave it there. Because, like, what what is that? We're just going to get rid of it and just put it off to the side right there. Okay, now to do the numbers, this took a very long and undesirably long time, but I had to find these letters or these numbers which were kind of foreign to me. So I looked up these jerseys from a little bit ago, the We Believe jerseys, the Golden State ones, and I masked out the two on here and I masked out the one here. Then I placed them into here onto my subject. But the thing I had to do was get rid of the midpoint, like the middle shade that was on there. So I got rid of that. And then I added this gradient map on top. And the gradient map reads as this yellow to orange, then to the darkest blue. But we didn't even use the blue, so there was really no point to me using that. But oh well, oof. Okay, so now at this point, I'm looking at this and I'm like, is that orange or is that red? Because like it's kind of just mixing between orange and red. I don't really know. You guys tell me. But at this point, I'm going to put all of the number the numbers together as a group. So I'm going to say number group copy, and then I'm going to duplicate it with Control J and make it into a smart object. And now on the smart object, we're going to add a little bit of displacement. So we're going to go to filter, distort, displace. We're going to use the same displacement map. Um, this one I'm noticing I don't have to go up very high in number to get a good effect. See, yeah, I don't know why it's so 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 weird the displacement map on this one, but oh well. Maybe we just didn't make it right. Maybe we're not maybe we're not good enough at displacement maps yet. But I just want to get a little bit of displacement on here. But yeah, I feel like that that looks that looks good right there. Um, and then this Oakland text definitely not bright enough. But the last thing I want to do before we like clean everything up is I want to add a little bit of style onto the shorts because uh, we don't really know so far as what the shorts are going to look like. So I like to go and freestyle on the shorts. I'm thinking about adding just like a kind of a stripe down the side, just like the jersey on the shorts and then adding a logo onto the shorts. But the first thing I need to do is get rid of all these nasty lines on here. So I'm going to speed through this, but I'm going to use the mixer brush. It's shortcut B, but you have to click on and drag down to the mixer brush. It's on the bottom. And set your flows to maybe a custom one, maybe a, maybe one that's already preset, but you can experiment with that. But anyways, the mixer brush is really good because you can alt click or command click on the Mac, click a point, and it's going to it's going to reference that similar point on there. But just try to get all that, that detail out of there with the mixer brush, and then we can add the detail onto our shorts. All right, so I cleaned up the shorts for the most part right here. I just used my mixer brush like, I, like we went over. Then I just copied uh, this trim right here down to there and warped it accordingly, right? So now I just have my logo that I want to put on the shorts. So I'm going to put this logo on the shorts, and I'm going to put it down around here, and then I'm going to distort it a little bit more to something of that degree. And then I'm going to use my displacement map. So I'm going to go filter, distort, displace and nine by nine is what I'm going to use for right now and then I'm going to use my displacement map and it actually did it didn't do a bad job it only is weird on that part right there so I think I'm going to go down just a little bit I'll go down to like seven by seven and then I'll see if that helps it a little bit yeah all right yeah so everything's kind of just folding to what the clothing looks like but the only problem that we have is it is not the right colors, so we're going to add a gradient map onto this. And we're going to just go to the colors that it should be. All right, yeah. So for purposes of this, I'm not going to have you guys sit through me trying to figure out the colors. So once I do, I'll be back. Okay, guys. So at this point, I have the logo on the shorts now right there. This is the logo. I, I, added, the no I added a little bit of noise to it. Excuse me. I added a little bit of noise to it, six of that. And then I added the gradient map onto that so that it blended in with our colors and it wasn't just like, well, I'm just gonna place it there. Nope, we added a gradient map. Then I added a little bit of levels adjustment to make it match the tone of the shorts. And then a little bit of exposure, cause you see if there's no exposure there, 
it looks like there's no depth and it just is there without any any surface or shadow so that wouldn't make any sense so now at this point we're pretty much done we just have to add the nike sign back on the the low or the sponsor if you want to don't do not have to but if you want to add the sponsor back on and then from there we have to clean everything up so i'm going to leave the rest of that up to you just the the nike line the rakuten uh sponsor and then i'm going to speed forward through my process of doing that and cleaning everything up to come to a finished product <laughs> guys so at this point this is what the jersey has come down to now we're just gonna have to go around the edge for just like the outside of the picture the background but I think I think all in all we did a very nice job with this and I hope this this video helped you guys out a lot in doing jersey swaps it's probably gonna be a long one as I'm thinking about it to edit it um, and just a long one in minutes total but it's it's good because it's gonna give you guys a lot of information and just seeing me work through the process of what I have to do to get a jersey swap done, right? So I'm gonna uh, also speed ahead just like the final product to where I get to the final product. Not too fast so you guys can see a little bit of what I'm really doing. It's just gonna be more of adding some like topaz adjustments and just getting the background nice and clean. But with that being said, I hope this video helped you guys out a ton. Make sure you guys drop a like down below if it helped you. Let me know what other tutorials you wanna see from me or just going on what you want to see on the youtube channel but with that being said i'm going to get back to it and show you guys the final product once i am done but it's been castle of scope everybody stay scoped but we're not done let's get it done peace guys